Hey guys, Mike from Fortinet Guru here. Uh, I'm just going to do a brief run through on 40OS 6.0. Uh, it just came out of beta, so it's publicly available. Um, if you guys haven't seen the brochure that discu discusses some of the stuff that it's actually brought on, I'll cover some of that and then I'll do a walkthrough with the actual GUI itself. But um, basically, 40OS 6 is the latest and greatest. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend putting this on anything production-based. You never want to put the first version out there. I'd probably wait until patch 2 at the very least, probably patch 3 or 4, though. Um, but basically, uh, the skinny on it is, is you know, in typical Fortinet fashion, they're, they're enhancing their all-in-one security fabric Fortinet device boring on building on Fortinet device and things of that nature. So um, a couple of the key features based on the brochure just in general is multipath intelligence for SD-WAN. I will say that the little bit of playing I've done on this, this is like the first instance of SD-WAN that Fortinet's done that actually makes sense and works the way it should, at least from a FortiGate perspective. Um, it provides you the ability to actually set SLAs and health checks in a proper manner uh, the SD-WAN capability will actually give you the the policy set, kind of like a policy based route to define what traffic uses which link and what kind of quality of the link needs to be maintained in order for that traffic to stay there. Um, Fortinet has brought on with 6.0 the new asset tagging. Basically you can tag address objects, devices, things of that nature, and that basically is just taking them a step further and they're getting closer to software-defined network from the FortiGate perspective. Um, one of the coolest things that I've seen so far has been the multi-cloud support for SDN connectors. I'll uh, show you a little bit about that. And then, you know, there's some new FortiGuard services that are coming out in general. Um, with the 6.0 release of 40 OS, they're also going to bring a new Forti client. Um, basically, it's going to give you some more functionality. It's going to enable you to better manage your endpoints. And one of the cool things about it is Forti client is actually getting far superior. Well, not superior. Expanded would be a good word. Um, support for Linux. So you know, when you get there, you'll be set. Advanced Threat Protection has taken a major step. Um, they have two new, call them services, I guess. Um, they have the, the Virus Outbreak Protection Service. They call it VOS for short. And um, basically what that does is it helps eliminate the gap between antivirus updates and what the Forta Sandbox sees. So it enables your device to react faster, less chance of getting your attack surface exposed. And then they have another one called um, the FortiGuard Content Disarm and Reconstruction Service. And basically this is just a service that will tear apart standard files like you know your, your document files, your PDFs, things like that. And uh, it will strip any malicious information from them. So that is just a general overview. We'll actually run through. I have a Forta Wi-Fi, my old trusty 61E. Um, I got this from Fortinet back at the extreme team training back in 2016 had a lot of fun in Dallas there um, but as you can see one of the first things that you're gonna see is that the security fabric has been expanded you have your typical security rating area this is your audit section it will tell you how you're doing um, for your settings you can actually pull through and of course tie your 40 devices into them a lot better um, and then it lets you actually list out your EMS which is nice but this is what I consider very, very cool. So one of the main things of the security fabric has been enabling you to bring in data from various sources and actually see it for, through that wonderful industry bullshit um, name of single pane of glass. You know, all the security vendors like to say, hey man, this is gonna give you your single pane of glass to be able to manage your entire environment. You just need to only do our stuff. Well, of course, Fortinet's on the same train, so you're going to see that here. But this is going to give you the ability, this fabric connector, it's going to give you the ability to see and 
check compliance on your on your cloud environment. So if you have an AWS deployment or if you have a bunch of domain controllers and servers up in Azure, you'll be able to see. Uh, if you go to create new, you can actually see the um, items that you're able to tie into it. So you, you name it, you specify accordingly. If it's AWS, you know it's going to ask you for your key, your password, or your secret key, your ID, things like that. Your Azure is going to be your tenant ID, client ID, and then the the basic things that you use to authenticate there. And then from there, you know it, it just it's going to expand your topology, your logical topology. You're going to be able to check so much more. It'll give you a lot more clear um, perspective, if you will. And I guess if you have to use the single pane of glass approach, I mean, who better to do it than a vendor that actually has a product in just about every damn sector? So, you know, whether it be a switch, an AP, uh, um, the actual firewall, cameras, you know, all that, a mail protection device, you know, obviously Fortinet has it all, so it all comes in handy. Your Fortiview section, it's, you know, your your typical thing here. Um, under network, this is where it gets fun. I don't know if you guys see this, but just in case you don't, check it out. Packet capture, they're bringing it back. Um, this is a 61E, so it has storage on board. I don't know if they will. Obviously, it won't be present in a device that doesn't have storage, I would guess. Um, I'll have to try it on a, a non one just to see. Um, I actually have DNS server feature set on on this. So that lets me know there. Um, so we're sitting here. This is SD WAN. You've always seen this. It's WAN link load balancing, or the the bastardized version of SD WAN that they brought out in um, five six and things like that, where it was basically just a zone that load balanced your outgoing traffic but you couldn't really do a whole lot with it. SD-WAN does the same thing It's but they've added features that actually make it more like an SD-WAN interface. You can obviously, you know, you can name your interfaces, you can set them up, you can keep on adding so you can have a bunch of interfaces in here and then you can set up their usage based on bandwidth volume recessions, but this is where it gets really cool. Performance SLA. This is going to give you the ability to say, you know, I want to ping. Let's say you have multiple IPsec tunnels and you're wanting to be able to distribute services across those IPsec tunnels based on the quality of the link. Well, if you have, let's say, your primary data, you might name this primary data. And then your server could be 10.2.2.1. And you wanted to check it for ping. And you wanted to include participants. This is where you'll put your actual links that are associated with it. This is where it's cool. You set SLA targets. And you can set various levels of targets. So you might want it to be 555. You might want it to be 15.15.10. And then 2.2.2. And that gives you your three levels of SLA. Now, after you configure this and you set your SLA targets, if the links that are a part of this SLA fail, they're getting pulled. Whereas before, all you had was your health check, right? So you had your zone, you could do your health check, you know, if the ping or whatever dropped to whatever interval, maybe five failures before it pulled it, then you know, it was only on up or down. Now you actually have latency, you have jitter, you have your packet loss. So this is awesome. This is a big step. I'm very excited about this. And then you come down here to SD-WAN rules, which are basically just policy-based rules or policy-based routes. So, you know, if you're going from here to here to there, use the best quality link, choose your destination interface, which I don't have any tied up right now and then whatever SLA that you created here. You can do a minimum quality SLA which means that you require whatever SLA you create which is awesome and you can also even just actually define a, an interface preference there. So SD-WAN huge jump, big fun. Um, let's see here, tags. So if you go under system and then tags you can create 
tags. And the tags are basically going to play into the whole software defined network thing when it comes around. But it's it's awesome. So basically, hear Fortinet say it. You know, um, through tagging, you're able to actually limit, list and tag and organize. Uh, you know, your interfaces, um, the objects, the devices, anything like that. Um, and basically from there you're able to configure global policies that as new devices or new addresses or new items come in, they're automatically assigned to these tags based on what they are, which means they automatically get certain security rules, security policies, things like that, and basically that gives you the ability of automatic enforcement. So it helps you not miss something that gets hung up in the minutia. Uh, policies and objects, policy sets getting better. Um, the wildcard FQDN does work a lot better and the internet service database is improved as well. And then you still have your health checks and things for your virtual servers so that didn't change a whole lot. Um, security profile is the same. Uh, 40, 40 OS 6 on the gate brings you know one click VPN settings and a, a lot of templates that have expanded this basically their goal is to make um, you know people get hung up on IPsec tunnels and SSL VPNs if you don't do it all the time you just kinda set it and forget it it's gonna end up hitting you so they have one click settings you tell the top cloud service Define all this. It's expandable. This is beautiful. I love it. Um, let's see here. I think that's it. They did change the way that APs are handled. So, you know, normally you have to go into the actual profile to be able to change anything here. But it's right here. It's easy peasy. So, um, Port of switch security policies are built right in here. Gives you the ability to do your 802.1x. I don't know if you guys noticed if you've been playing with this already, but the locking and report section got some expansion. So, and then last but not least, you have your monitor page. Um, this gate has every single feature and on demand turned on, so a lot of this stuff is probably old stuff. You know, it tells you what's what. I mean, this all stuff, if you're feeding this into a Ford analyzer that's running the latest version of code, I mean, your indicators are compromised. You're going to be awesome. You're going to see a lot. So, you know, 40 OS 6, you know, it's typical Ford in that fashion, y'all. It, it's going to increase your network security thanks to tags and your ability to do one touch VPN and zero touch deployment, you know, removing all the complexity from security. Keep it simple. Um, the multi cloud security, you know, bridging into all of your all of your tenants, your Azure space, your AWS space, you know, all that stuff. Um, the, uh, continuous endpoint visibility and compliance thanks to the new Forda client and the ability of the fabric to actually integrate with other products. Now that's going to be huge. The advanced threat protection that's going to come in handy because of the GDPR regulations that are coming down in May. You know, it's going to increase mandates on global businesses. So if you you know you cross country, you're going to need it. Um, and of course, you know, anything that improves the um, unified access through you know having your access points, your Ford switches, and all that stuff all tied in together, the fabric's just going to get better. And uh, I'm really impressed with where they're going on the Ford Analyzer and the Ford Manager, so that's what you have to look forward to. But um, if you have any questions, hit up the comments below. I will try to answer them. Um, I might make a more in-depth video showing some tips and tricks as I get more familiar with it. Uh, I've been burning all my time just dealing with the 7K at one of my clients that's having some wonderful CPU spike issues that's causing some pain. So, um, but you guys have a good night. Give me a shout if you need anything. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.